ここでは俺が全てを支配する死ねと消えろ Hey everybody, BAM Collectibles here, and we are back for another statue unboxing review. None other than Cartoon World's Shisui Uchiha. I've been super excited not only to add this to my collection, but to showcase this for all the world to see. Staring at you in the center of the base is Shisui's Mangekyo Sharingan, also that gorgeous green trim that goes all throughout. A little bit of damage on the black portion of the left and right side of the base. I can clean that up with a bit of black paint. Dead center, you'll find the Uchiha stone tablet there, and then also a bunch of flames are going to be riddled all throughout, which kind of look like Amaterasu flames, but also could just be regular chakra particle effects that are floating up throughout the ground. This statue has so many particle effects and extra different diorama pieces that they sculpted separately. We'll take a look at this thing from a top view, and you'll see there's a notch here on the tablet. There's a few over here to the right, one there, there. And just all throughout, we're going to be sculpting a bunch of different pieces and adding them on separately, which is kind of a thing that Cartoon World does, right? They have such an elaborate base that they created here that it'll take a bunch of pieces to come together and make it happen. Serving as the backbone to support many pieces in this statue, you'll see this piece of rock and rubble here. I do love the reddish tint that they added to these rocks, and there's a notch that's found on the bottom where it will key into the bottom back side of the base. Also, that smoother section on the bottom is so nothing rubs against each other. Uh, but if we go up there, we'll see the flames do continue to rise all the way up. As we continue to pan up towards this piece, we'll see a specific slot that's over here on that top left section. And then also the rocks that you can see on the left side right here and also the right side are going to be used to support a very heavy wing that comes on the Susano later. At the very, very top of the statue, we'll see this slit that's going to be supporting one of the largest effect pieces I've ever seen on the statue that does glow in LEDs. So we'll take a look at that in the near future. Lastly, for the bottom of this base, they sculpted two different rock pieces separately. I think these are just adding to the effect and the power that's going on with this statue of the rocks kind of floating and shooting up in the air. Later on, we'll see some particle effects that will be installed that make much more sense of why the debris is shooting upwards. For those of you unfamiliar and not aware of the Naruto Storm games, they did give us a what if scenario on what it would look like if Shisui did have his complete form Susano. It looks like a high heel is actually the notch that'll key in to the bottom. There's a hole there because they actually string these up, hang them up to dry after they paint them. So that's why that is there. Taking a closer look at the actual texturing of the statue, for those of you that have been following the channel or know statues in general, when you see the two letters CW, Cartoon World, you know you're going to be getting a quality statue. On the left side, you'll see the silicone pads that they added. That's to be sure that when we install the wings, resin is not rubbing up against resin because it will snap. It's very brittle at times if you rub it up against each other. You'll see magnets impacted into the resin on the hands there. And this is really done well because we've seen other statues like Top Studio I can think of where sometimes they don't hide those magnets as well on the Susano. Holding this in my hand, you can just see how huge this is. It's also really heavy. Speaking of heavy, we have the first wing coming up that I cannot even fit into the frame of the camera. Just like the back, we'll find a silicone pad on here, again, preventing that resin from rubbing up against resin and cracking, breaking. We don't want none of that. Up top here, we'll see the hand. There's something that's missing. We'll install later on. Kind of the handle of a, a sword or a katana is what they look like to me. As if you couldn't tell on the body alone, the resin quality is top notch. You can see all the different colorations that we have on there from the dark greens to the lighter greens to more of the clear look on the bottom of the wing. Here's the secondary wing as well. This one has a steel rod that's impacted in the center. If you saw the hole in the back before, that's why, because it needs that steel rod to be able to secure it into place and make sure that it can be supported. I'm not gonna lie, Cartoon World does some amazing engineering, but this one still scares me. There's a lot that's relying upon friction. We have that steel rod, the silicone pads, and then also those pieces of rock where the wings settle. But it's undeniable that when you see this come together like this, how epic is it to see both wings spread out at max capacity all the way to the side like this? It has such a presence when you see it, you know, both on camera and in the room. With the body and wings done, we do have several different parts we still need to install. These are those tips of the wings that looks like the hilt on a katana. We'll see that clear going up to green. They just go in there by just sitting into place with gravity. There is no magnets. 
The shoulder armor pieces were also sculpted separately and they do look fantastic. They have a rectangular notch here on the left and a square one on the right with those magnets inside. But I love that little bit of flame piece that we can see on the bottom there, giving it a little bit more character than just being a rectangular shoulder pad. Up next, we have the Susano head, which I think was actually sculpted proportionately for the size of the statue. Sometimes they can run a little bit too small or a little bit too big, but being the size and scale of this statue, I think they hit it spot on. We have that Tengu looking nose on the front, the yellow colored eyes, a magnet with a notch in the bottom is how it's going to attach to the back. And also the hair sculpting on this was very well done. Looks a little crooked, so we'll shift that over right there. The left hand was sculpted in a standard kind of closed fist look. We'll see a magnet if you look close enough in the center there. Also the chakra particle fleece, awesome little effect that they added onto there. There's a magnet impacted inside and it just snaps right in. If you are familiar with his Susano in the Storm 4 games, you'll know that his right hand is going to be wielding a pretty intense looking weapon. This is going to be the handle that's sculpted onto the fist already all together. That's going to be kind of using as a balancing factor in that weapon. In my last Shisui statue unboxing video, I did pose the question, is this weapon here, is it a drill? Is it a lance? Maybe it's a drill lance, a mixture of the both. I always love to hear from you in the comments, but let me know what you think it is. I'm gonna go with a drill lance, but this piece of rock here we'll see is actually gonna be used to balance this weapon as well. It's extremely heavy, thick, solid all around. That's where the handle will go into. When I look at this up close, you know, it actually reminds me of the drill looking weapon that Kimimaru used against Gar as well. It is a little tricky to get into place because you have to lift up the arm, fit it into place and put them both back in there, but they do support each other so well and hold it up. And it is that time we're gonna crack open two packs of the Naruto CCG cards. Everyone's always asking me, you know, where I pick these up at. They are extremely hard to find these days. That, and they're also kind of expensive. So, you know, I'm gonna continue to do them though. I have a nice little stockpile and I love opening these up on the channel and letting everybody see them and just kind of be aware. Oh, dude, look at this. <laughs> this awesome freaking kid third Hokage or Hiruzen. <laughs> and then we have Kid Minato as well. They look so cool. See, this is one of the reasons why I love opening up some Naruto CCG cards because you get to see, oh, dude, look at this. That is incredible. So that's only our rare for the pack. It's not a super rare, but that looks amazing. You got a purple border with Jiraiya and Naruto. Uh, but anyway, what I was saying, one of the reasons why I love opening these packs is you get to see art or art forms of some of the characters in the show that we really didn't get to see. Like, you know, I didn't get to see, you know, Kid Haruzin much or Minato. So really cool to get to see those. Kiba looking pretty old. There's Kabuto as our reverse foil for the pack. Kid Kakashi, which has to be one of the coolest outfits. I can't wait to showcase the statue of both him, Rin, Obito, and Minato all together. Uh, but I also am gonna need kind of your advice if you can let me know, which card do you think I should pick up? These are custom Naruto cards. Should I pick up the left or the right one as far as displaying it next to this statue? Here is that giant effect piece I mentioned before. It is a moon with a Kodomatsukami on the front section of it. We have on the bottom that notch that goes towards the top of that rocky section behind the Susano. This is where the battery pack is to illuminate this. And it looks incredible overall, right? The oranges and the yellows, we have the glossy effect look to it. And then on that top right portion of this also, we'll see a specific notch is in there. Uh, and later on, it's just a small crow is gonna be installed on there, which will be a nice little touch to it, but it just slides right into place on the back. First, we'll go ahead and show you the battery pack here. There's a little lever that turns things on and off and it runs by three triple A's. I don't know about your experience, but I hate batteries. They can leak acid. You have to replace them over time. It's something you have to manage. So I've shown this in some of my previous videos before, but I want to show this to you again. I'm gonna take these out and I actually purchased something that I would call electric batteries. Yep, electric batteries that get plugged into the wall and we'll take a look at these all together and see how I get them installed. I also have links in the description below that lead to my Amazon or the Bamazon affiliate link store where you could find these on there if you want to pick some up for yourself. First off, we have the AC adapter, which is going to be supplying the main power to the unit. And this, this is also the main battery that gets plugged into that AC adapter with this wire that you see here. It's just going to go into one of these slots. It shouldn't matter which one you do put it into. 
And then also included are gonna be some of these, I don't know what to call them exactly, but I'm just gonna call them proxy batteries. Depending upon how many batteries you need, you just select the ones that you do. For this, of course, I said there's only three, so I'll grab these extra two and store the other ones away. For each battery, you need 1.5 volts. So you'll see here, this red dial that comes with a key, you need to turn it to be 4.5 because you have three batteries. Uh, three times 1.5 equals that 4.5. And that is the, gonna be the proper voltage to be able to light everything that you see here. Once we plug the AC adapter into that main battery, we'll install it into position. And what's nice is that black wire is so super thin that you can install this and it's not gonna you know, require a certain amount of room to, to fit it into place. So we'll grab those extra proxy batteries install them in there that allow it to have the current travel to the full source and we'll take a look and see how this looks i think this is such a, a brilliant ingenious idea again you get away from the battery acid that exists i think the leds might even be a little bit brighter or at least it's one less thing that you have to manage and maintain over time Again, because of that thin black wire, we can still slide this into place and it doesn't interfere or get in the way of anything. You know, I also wanted it to gonna get in the way of this being able to magnetize this piece on the back here. But again, just slides right into place. You can put the wire in the direction you want it to hang afterwards. I want it to go straight down, right? So it runs along the back side of the statue and I don't see a thing. And it has enough length to where it's no issue to plug this into the wall. I will share it as well. I'm gonna be plugging this into one of my wireless remotes that I use. People have asked about these before. So I'll plug it into the wall and this is gonna be into channel section, I think four on the remote. So once that's plugged in, we'll put the AC adapter in the wall, just press this button and boom, turns right on. Super easy, super convenient. You can have your statues all powered uh, just like this if you want to. Again, check out those links if you need it. The crow I mentioned is kind of the icing or the sprinkles on the icing of the cake here. Uh, I think that they also could have maybe added the Mangyoko Shanigan eye onto the crow that might have been a cool touch but this is just an extra crow goes in the top adds onto the details of the base inspired from the special or ultimate move that Shisui use in the Storm 4 game, we have these eruption looking particle effects. They're gonna be shooting off the bottom of the ground. They are keyed into place uh, via a certain notch. And also some of them have a steel wire, some of them have magnets, and we have that rocky debris that was sculpted on there and painted as well. We'll take a look at some other parts, not all of them because there's quite a few on the statue. This one right here has a hole and there is a specific reason why there's going to be something that's keyed into it later that's very important. And then this is the one that goes up towards the top section of the moon, that little tiny slit that went into the rock that we saw earlier. Now the temptation to use every single piece they give you in the statue is a real thing, but sometimes less is more. So for this specific one, I don't like the one that's blocking or you know in front of the moon right there. So I'm gonna take it off and uh, that's how I like it. I might even move one particle effect later. We'll take a look and see. Shisui is a master of the body flicker technique where he can move extremely fast, so fast to the point where it leaves like after images in his place. It's crazy how they sculpted these to reflect that ability. We'll see kind of like the transparent looking resin. And then there's also more of the painted sections. Honestly, I I'm blown away how they even accomplished this. We have a notch at the bottom that's going to be going into the one of those rocks we showed earlier with a, a hole that had it inside there. And here is the hand. This section is gripped to hold one of his swords or the short sword that he has which I will say is made of actual metal. Love it when they do that. So it has a more of a durability to it. So I don't have to worry about it breaking or snapping on, but slides into place. Gravity holds it in there with friction, but really cool additions that they had sculpted onto here if you want this option. So they have one that's gonna be on the right that goes into that rock. And then we have another version on the left that's kind of a mirrored image of that. In all my unboxing and statue time, I've never seen anything sculpted like this before. So really cool execution of how this ability works. With both after images installed, here is the main sculpt for Shisui. It looks incredible. He's going to be posed and perched on top of that Uchiha clan or stone tablet that we saw in the beginning there. Again, his hand is in the position to hold his short sword as you see there, but the outfit itself is perfectly done. I always loved how simple his outfit is. We have this kind of leathery uh, guard that goes all throughout his back and chest area as well. 
The sword is the same as the other, so die cast metal was done for that. The head sculpt on him, I think, was perfectly done. You can always let me know in the comments below if you disagree with that, but you know, not really too much emotion going on here, which I'm perfectly fine with. And they had the actual shining gun or Mengeko shining gun sculpted or paint stickered on there nicely. I have to remove that one effect piece in the front to get him into place. And for the Cartoon World Susano line, they did include the addition size or the plaque that you can showcase next to the statue with a picture frame. So really sturdy, extremely thick, heavy feeling. We have the artwork of Shisui on the front there. Also the addition size on the bottom right corner. So 280 made in the entire world. A decently large addition size for how large the statue is, but I guess it did sell very well. Stay tuned so you can see the custom LED job on the statue. But before we do, I want to talk about these after images that they included. I kind of think that it might be too much. And so I want to show you what it looks like with those not installed so that you can see. I kind of prefer them not on there. Do you like them on? Do you like them off? Let me know. At first, I used this spotlight LEDs, you know, on the back of the statue because I wanted to see how it looked or how much it would illuminate it. But after I saw how good it looked, even with just this simple light, I told myself I have to do some custom LED work. So you can see this little thing. Get ready. It took me about 30 minutes, but this is the final outcome. Holy shiitake mushrooms, does this look incredible. I'm so glad I decided to customize the LEDs and I'm so glad you joined me on today's video. As always, everybody, I will see you in the next one. Do what you love and love what you do. Bam out.